Welcome back. We are studying risk and uncertainty and we have learned what do we mean by risk, what do we mean by uncertainty. We have also learned about expected utility. Now in this video we are going to compare different kind of people and decision makers we find in society. They are risk averse entities, risk neutral entities and risk loving entities. So let us begin with an example that let us say you are given two options option A and option B and option A is simple that you would be given INR 50 with certainty and option B is that the person who is offering this option is going to toss a coin and if it turns out to be head you get 100 and if it turns out to be tail you get 0. We can assume it is a fair coin so the probability associated with 100 is half and probability associated with 0 is half. For most of the people, most of the human beings, they would prefer option A in place of option B. So I want you to pause and think about it. What would you do whether you would prefer option A to option B? Let us do it for people who prefer option A. Now what I am going to do, let us do this exercise, I will keep option B as it is and option A we will reduce it to 45. We can reduce it further to 40, to 39, to 38. There would be a point that you become indifferent between option A and option B and if we reduce that number further then you would prefer option B to option A. So, you know that's that's the basic exercise we are trying to do but coming back to these two options between 50 and this you know, there are people who would take option A there are people who would take option B and there are people or decision maker who are indifferent between these two option A and B what are we trying to do of course here we are have only two possibility in reality there could be indifferent possibilities you know a1 to An and each with probability P1 to Pn such that summation of Pi is equal to 1. So we are talking about all the cases and we can obtain equivalent expected utility. What is it going to be? P summation Pi Ui Ai. That's what you are going to get and what is this? Basically this is the expected value of u of a that's what you are trying to obtain here one could have without you know one could have done this differently one could have simply obtained the expected value associated with these different outcomes so what would be the expected value expected value of a and then one could have obtained the associated utility so now we have two entities one that is taking the expected value first and then obtaining the utility and second is first obtaining the utility and then taking the expected value. So one can, could look at it that for most human beings as I said this is going to be greater than this and why is it so because we are risk averse people. There could be some people who like taking risk, they are gamblers and for them u of e of a is going to be less than e of u of a and this is risk loving, risk taking or gamblers. And then there could be a third category for whom u of e of a is simply equal to E of U of A and these people are typically risk neutral. Then we are going to talk about them one by one. Let us first focus on risk averse people, risk averse. Typically what happens think about in life if you have nothing at 0 you get 1 rupee at 100 you get 1 rupee so from 0 to 1 it becomes 1 it becomes 101 at 1000 you get 1 rupee it becomes 1001 at all these levels you are getting 1 rupee do you think the gain 
the additional gain you are having because of one rupee is the same. Typically, I would say people who have nothing, if they get one rupee, they value it way more than people who have little money, they still value it something. But if people who have a lot of money, they value this one rupee really less. So, <coughs> how can we represent it in the graph? This can be represented that utility is increasing, marginal utility is positive, but marginal utility is diminishing also. You know, so it is coming out to be something like this. It's increasing, u is increasing, here is outcome, but it is increasing at a decreasing rate. And so let us look at what happens in this particular case. Here is 0 and let us say here is 100. And so this is, one can say, this is basically 10, this is 0. And if we do this, and clearly the at midpoint, this is 50, but let us see here u of 50 is greater than half of u of 0 plus half of u of 100. And that's what we see in the graph. And this is, is called concave function. Okay, this is concave function. What happens in the concave function? In this particular case, u dash is greater than 0, that is marginal utility, and u double dash is less than 0. This is a concave function and this we can say that at what you get at this level, this is equivalent to because if we calculate half of 0 plus half of 10, we get 5. So, this is equivalent of u of 25. So, if we take here 25, it will have exactly same um, utility coming. So, we can say 25 is certainty equivalent, equivalent to option B, option B for, for this special, special risk averse person. Why I say special? Because here we are assuming that utility is given by root x. This may not be true for all risk averse person. And so 25 is certainty equivalent and how much is the risk premium? How much this person is willing to forego? 25 unit, quite high risk premium this person is willing to pay to be certain about outcome rather than having this lottery which is very, very risky for him. In graph also we can talk about, you know, we can talk about it because risk aversion is also a matter of degree. Someone could be way more risk averse than someone else. So, if we have two situation, here is let us say good outcome, bad outcome. Let us say this is the situation. This is the constant expected value. This is guaranteed outcome. And if we put here, you know, the indifference curve, you know, one could have like this and another person could have like this. Both are convex, but this is way more bent in comparison to blue one. So, we can say that, let us say this is for Mohan and this is for Sohan. We can say that Sohan is, Sohan is way more risk averse risk averse than Mohan. Why do we see this? That let us keep here the point D, C, B, let us say A, uh, we can do X. We can see and here we can see Y. So, Suhan is willing to exchange Y for A because they are at the same situation. But Mohan prefers x to a. x is a risky proposition that Mohan prefers x to a while that is not the case with Sohan. Sohan prefers y to x. So, clearly 
um, Mohan is willing to take more risk in comparison to Sohan. So we can say Mohan is way more, is, uh, we have already said, uh, Mohan is way more risk loving than, um, than Sohan. But that I have already written, that you should understand. So that's about risk aversion. How about risk loving? Risk loving will have, you know, concave, you sorry, convex utility function. Function. This person would like to take gamble, so his utility would be something like this. So here is zero, and here is let us say hundred, and. So if we have here the value 50, you know the expected utility U50 is here uh, while the gamble, the lottery which is half of U10, U0 plus half of U100 is way higher. So our formulation here is this one is true, the expected value is less the utility of expected value is less than expected value of utility and so this person is risk loving typically we do not find such people what we are saying in terms of utility that person uh, would value one rupee more if he has more and more money typically this is not what we see diminishing marginal utility is being violated here so we do not observe these things in real life and the third one is that risk neutral and risk neutral is simply a straight line you know here is 0 here is 100 here is 50 so whether it is u50 or or half of u0 plus half of u100 both are going to be equal so this person is called a risk neutral person. We can say big corporation which are taking risk and deciding, um, taking risky decision all the time. So for them law of large number is on their side, they are making repeated decision and so for them it doesn't matter whether they have the gamble or they get the expected value. So here is maximizing expected value is the same as maximizing expected utility and this is the example of risk neutral. In other framework that we have seen, how can we indicate that this is the guaranteed, this sorry, this is the constant expected value, this is the guaranteed um, consumption and then we have, you know, we can have this, then we have this, and then we have this. This is risk averse, this is risk neutral, this is risk loving. If we have something of this sort, this is more risk averse, more risk averse, and if we have something of this sort, this is more risk loving and that is the way we could represent all different kind of people in the society and it should be clear to you. Thank you.